In this short video, I'll talk about how to install Web Connection with the full version of IIS. We'll talk about both the client-side installation on operating systems like Windows 10, Windows 8, Windows 7, as well as the installation on a Windows server, which uses a slightly different user interface. Let's get started. So here we are in Windows 10, and I need to explicitly install IIS on any version of the client OSs of Windows. So Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10 do not install a web server by default. You actually have to go in and explicitly install it. On all those operating systems, the process is pretty much the same. Same. So type Windows Features into the search box and then click on Turn Windows Features on or off, which brings up a dialog that has all the Windows features associated with it. Click into the Internet Information Services, open that up, and enable the default options. Now, the default options install IIS, but they don't install everything that we need. So let's go over some of the things we need to add. Um, the first thing is, and this is very, very important, is go make sure that the IS management compatibility and specifically the IS metabase support is enabled. This is the only feature that you need here, but it's vitally important. Otherwise, Web Connection cannot configure uh, IIS. And then you click into the World Wide Web Services and you want to go into the application development features. And the most important ones inside of here is that Web Connection works with .NET, and so you need to enable ASP.NET operation. So once you do that, you automatically get ISAPI extensions, which is the other feature that you will need to use with a web connection. Okay, so then in the common HTTP features, you can leave those alone. There's uh, nothing that we need to change here. Health and diagnostics, the default settings are fine. I recommend you also enable tracing, which gives you failed request tracing in IIS. The performance features, we don't need to do anything. The static compression is fine. And then the security features is the final thing where we need to make a couple of changes. Most importantly, we need to enable basic authentication and Windows authentication so that the web connection admin pages can be used with authentication. Additionally, I recommend that you enable the SSL features here. So that's certificate mapping and SSL mapping. So these are the things that you need in order to get IIS configured. Click the OK button and off you go for doing the installation. In most cases, the installation will not require a reboot and you're ready to go. IIS is installed properly. If you're installing IIS on a server-based operating system like Windows Server 2012 or 28, you will need to use the server manager to actually get the features installed. So what you do is you click on the Manage button here and Add Roles and Features and then basically go through the wizard here. So you click the installation type, which is role-based installation, pick the server type, which is the name of your local server, and then the server roles. So one of the roles that you configure is as web server, as in the client side installation, we need to make sure that we also add the IIS 6 management capability, which is a crucial feature of the installation. So again, make sure you go into the IIS management components and then select IIS metabase compatibility. And in my case, this is already installed on my live server. Then the rest of the settings look very similar to the settings that we saw earlier. So we go into the web server uh, drop down, and then we see the common HTTP features, which are the same ones that we saw earlier, which are pretty much good by default. Health and diagnostics, and again, I enable tracing here explicitly. The security features, and we need to make sure that we add basic authentication, and then also Windows authentication, which are the two requirements for web connection to access the server side components. Finally, the application development features, make sure you install ASP.NET and the ISAPI extensions, which will automatically be included when you click the ASP.NET functionality. And this ensures that your web connection server can run properly. Okay, click the next button and then go ahead and just follow the wizard through to actually let the installation run and all your IIS components will be installed on Windows Server. After you've installed IIS, you're ready to install Web Connection. The way that you do this is you download the executable and run it to unpack the Web Connection installation into a folder of your choice. By default, that'll be the CWConnect folder. You can then run setup.exe to start off the installation. It will prompt you for admin rights because Web Connection requires a number of administrative features for configuring the web server, creating directories, and a few other things. So the first page of the setup page here allows you to choose the web server that you would like to use with your Web Connection application. So we're going to choose IIS and the .NET handler. By default, the installation wizard goes into the default website. So a website has to exist already. Um, if you want to use a different website, you can click on the advanced IIS site selection and then click the other site. So we're going to stick with the default site and click the next button. 
So here it tells us where the web files are located. So this is the samples and they live in this folder and that we will create a virtual folder in the default website called WConnect. We'll click the next button and click the finish button to actually install. So at this point, the installer will prompt a few things. So if GhostScript is installed, it will want to install a PostScript driver. It'll configure Visual Studio. It'll set permissions on folders set up the message board, and then give you kind of a summary page that tells you what had happened in this installation. Click the OK button, and you get one more prompt that asks you whether you want to create a shortcut to this new installation. This shortcut starts Visual Fox Pro with all the paths intact to point you and start your web connection application, the sample application. Okay, so we say yes, and web connection pops up. So here's your web connection server in the Fox Pro window. And it basically is your application that has started up and is ready to re receive requests. On the other side here, we have a browser that popped up. And as you can see here, it popped up on localhost, which is the local website, so the default website, and the WConnect virtual directory and a default.htm page. So this is a static page that has the samples attached to it. So we can click on the Hello World web connection request, and this verifies that, hey, a web connection server is actually running at this point. So what happened here behind the scenes? What we're looking at here is a request that is running on localhost, which is running against the local web server. We have a virtual directory called WConnect, which is where the samples live of this particular IIS installation. And then we have a test page.wwd, which is responsible for actually handling the request. And if we go back over into the Foxpo server, we can see that indeed we have a test.wwd request that is fired into the server. So if we hit this request multiple times, we can see the test.wwd. If we hit a different request, we get a different result. So here we have a show albums.wwd and a show albums.wd that is hit over here in the server. So the way that this works is that if we go and hit one of these pages is that this .wwd mapping is actually configured inside of IIS. So if we go over to IIS and we take a look and see what was created is, it created a virtual directory called wconnect on the server. There was also an application pool that was created called Westwind Web Connection. And if we click here on the basic settings, we see that we have a virtual directory called wconnect with an application pool called Web Connection, Westwind Web Connection, in a folder called CW Connect Web w Connect. So it's basically found our path and now mapped this folder to our Web Connection application. And that basically uh, refers to this part of the URL. In addition to this, the Web Connection configuration also configures a number of handler mappings. So there is, for example, a .wwd handler mapping that is responsible for routing requests from the web page to your actual Web Connection handler and then into your Web Connection server. On the Web Connection side of things, we have a Visual Fox Pro application that is running and acting as a Web Connection server that is listening to requests. So in order to demonstrate here, let me actually shut down completely um, and demonstrate the shortcut that was created for you for Web Connection or any new projects that you create. So if I click on the shortcut, it will automatically take me into the folder where Web Connection is installed and it will automatically have set up the environment so that Web Connection can run. So the project that we're running here is called WC Demo and we tag a main extension on for the main PRG file. So do WC Demo main to start the server backup. Okay, so if we refresh here, we can see that sure enough, it still is working. Behind the scenes, Web Connections server interface is made up of two main components. There's the actual server, which is a class that handles the incoming requests from IIS and then routes those requests to a particular handler method on a process class. So what this means is, is that we have a .wwd extension that is routed to our Web Connection application. And based on that extension, the Web Connection server then figures out which process class to call and based on the name of the file, which method to call inside of it. To see this in more detail, let's actually create a new project. And in order to do that, we need to run the Web Connection console. To do this, bring up the Foxbook command window and type do console in the Web Connection install folder. 
This brings up the management console and then you can click on various links here. So when we create a new project, we get a warning that we need to run as an administrator. So we're currently not logged in as an administrator in this application, so we need to exit and restart the application or Visual Fox Pro really using administrative rights. So what I'm gonna do is use the shortcut and run as administrator to fire it up. Okay, so now we can run console again and now we should be able to create a new project. Excellent. So in order to be really creative here, I'm going to create a new project called test project. And I'm going to create a process class called test process. So a project is the top level entity of a web connection application and it contains the web connection server. There's only one web connection server per project. You can have multiple process classes and this will be the main process class. And each process class in turn can contain multiple endpoint methods that handle web requests. So if you recall earlier in the sample, we had testpage.wwd that was mapped to the wwdemo test page method that actually handled that request. So any methods that you create on a process class will become essentially an HTTP endpoint that you can handle. Next, we need to pick the web server that we want to use, and I'm going to use IIS here and the .NET handler again. If you need to specify another website on your server, you can do that here by clicking the advanced IIS site selection, but we're gonna to stick to the default one. The new project gets created in a folder that you specify. So by default, it goes into web connection projects, which is a folder where all new projects are created by default and the name of the project underneath it. The project structure that is created is a hierarchical file folder structure. So it contains both the web folder as well as the application folder with your code. Next, we need to specify the name of the virtual directory. And so that will be the subfolder in the website that we create. If you want to create your project at the root, you can do that as well by removing the virtual and that will create it on the root side. The site needs to exist in order for this to work, however. So in this example, we're going to keep it as a virtual directory and put it in the test project folder. Finally, we also need to specify a script map. So the script map is, is what gets mapped, what maps the requests to a specific process class. So here I'm going to call the script map TP1, which means that any file with an extension of .tp1 will automatically be mapped to the test process class. Then we click next and finally, we're ready to start creating our new project. So what we do here is, is we get to choose between a standard process class that is typically used for HTML based application or a REST API service class that you can use for Ajax backends or for API based services. So in this case, we're going to stick with the HTML backend and we say, okay, and let it run and create a new project for us. So a help file is uh, popping up again that tells us what to do with the finished project and a sample page pops up that lets us test this application. So now over here, you can see there is some information that says there is a new project that has been created and we can do test project main to start up the web connection server. With our new test project server running in Foxpro, we can now flip back over to the browser and go to our HTML sample page that was generated for the project. So if you click on the hello world test page link, we should see a response coming back from the server. And sure enough, as we hit this page, we're firing it into the server. You can control the code that is fired by looking at the actual process class. So what we can do here is, is we can open up the test process class as a PRG file. So this is test process.prg. And we can see that there's a small stub program that actually instantiates the test process class and then calls a process method on that class. So the process method then is responsible for routing. So here's the test process class and it has a method inside of it called test page. And that is what runs our actual request. To prove this, let's make a change here. The time is, and let's add the time to it. Okay, when we do this, we can start the server back up, go back over to our web connection server. And sure enough, here's our string with the embedded value. If we want to add some new functionality to our web application by creating a new endpoint, we can do that by simply going into the test process class and adding a new method. So I'm going to add a method called hello world, which is going to be very, very simple, of course. And I'm going to use response.write hello world time is plus plus time. 
So just this before, but this is very, very low level because I'm using the response.write mechanism. So in order to invoke this method, I now have to say hello world.tp1. And when I hit this, there is our request, including the bad formatting that I've written out before. So there's a number of different HTML generation mechanisms available. And obviously this is the very, very lowest level that Web Connection provides. So you can write any raw response and output that directly into the response screen. So for example, we could change this again and say this dot standard page and then change this to, isn't it nice to run Foxpro code on the web? And if we run this again, now we should go back to having a kind of nicely formatted version of our code. Of course, there is much more sophisticated functionality available in Web Connection to generate HTML. And you can watch additional videos to find more information on that. For now, thank you for watching this video on Web Connection configuration with IIS.